Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to do one called diff to arrays. Uh, we want to compare two arrays and return a new array with any items only found in one of the two given arrays, but not both. In other words, return the symmetric difference of the two arrays. And so um, remember to use read, search, ask, try to prepare a program, and you can return the array with its elements in any order. So the order doesn't matter. So here we've got one, two, three, five, one, two, three, four, five. So this one would return an array with just uh, the four in it, I'm guessing. Uh, here we've got, uh, okay, so I'm going to compare this array. This one has, this one has, this one has dirt. Pink wool is not dead shrub and dread shrub. So this one would just return pink wool. So I like this one because it's very explicit and we know that we're exactly what we want to return. Let's throw this in here. Um, we can go, well, yeah, let's do that. We can console log this. Um, right now we want the answer to be pink wool, but there's nothing there. So perfect. We've got uh, something to work with now. So our new array, um, I'm going to do this kind of the most straightforward way that in initially, and then we'll refactor. So let's go, um, so for, we're going to let i equal zero. We're going to have i is less than array one dot length. And then i plus equals one. So what are we going to do? We're iterating through array one, which is this guy. I'm going to break this down like this so it's easier to see. And I'm going to pull this out just so that you can see it lined out more. Okay, cool. So we're going to go through, this is array one, and then this is array two. And so as you can see, it's just going to iterate through here. So what we're doing is going through array one. We're going to go, is this one in there? So it's going to say yes. So um, what we're going to do is say, if um, array one at position i, um, no, but first we want to do array two. So we're going to check to see if the index of array one at position i is negative one. What does that mean? That means is, we're going to first say this position is diorite, uh, di diorite a in here. Is this, it, what's the index of diorite in this array? And this one, it's going to say one. And it's going to continue to do that. Here it's going to be two. Here it's going to be three. Here it's going to be four. No, no. Here it's going to be one, zero, one, two, three. And then when it gets to pink wool, the index of that is going to be negative one. And so therefore, we want to add this to our new array. So we're going to say array. Uh, no, we're going to push it to the new array. So new array dot push uh, array one at position i. Cool, and so this is, this is working for, for this um, purpose, but that's only because um, we've, in this example, we have pink wool <clears throat> being um, on the first array and not the second array. But what happens if we were to put pink wool in the second array? Then it wouldn't work, right? So what we need to do is just basically do this again. So we're gonna say for, we let j equal zero, uh, j is less than array two dot length, and then j plus equals one. So if <clears throat> uh, array one dot index of array two at position j is equal to negative one, then we do the new array dot push array two at position i, right? At position j. Cool. And so now it works on the second one. Would And it works on the first one as well. So if we go back to our original um, problem, it works on the second one as well. And so I think that this is actually a successful answer for this uh, problem. Okay, cool. But one of the things, let's refactor a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, we could, this, this is a duplicate function, right? We're, we're, we're repeating ourselves by adding this function in here twice, and that is uh, sort of annoying. So what if we could write this into a function and then just compare them? Um, we could say uh, function 
uh, compare arrays. Compare against other. Okay, and then um, the first and then second. And now we've got the function. Let's just get rid of this for now, and we can repurpose it to fit here. So i is equal to zero. And then instead of array one, we say first. And then here we say second. And then now that we have a function compare against other, we can just run this twice. And then you go second and first. So it'll automatically First and second, first and second. Oh, instead of passing in first and second, we go array one and array two, and then we go array two and array one. Okay, cool. So now we're only writing this um, for statement once, and we're reusing this function, and that's pretty cool. Um, this is this is this is pretty useful because so what we're doing is we're just passing the parameters in differently, and so <clears throat> that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing we could do is do a for each, um, which would make this a little bit more succinct. Um, again, this isn't entirely important, but we could be go first dot for each, and then we go uh, function, um, you know, element or uh, we can go number and then we say we do that one right and instead of saying he here with the first dot i we can go number and then number we don't need to use i. So now we've got a for each function, um, which functions the exact same way. So we've just refactored it to do it another way. So first off, we dried up the code by writing the function only once, and then we've just compared it against each other. But uh, we could take this even further, right? Because we know we can make this an ES6 arrow function, which would uh, tighten it up a little bit more. Um, we run the tests. That, would, that still works. Um, we also know that we can do a statement like this. We can put this on a single line. Uh, and that gives us the pink wool as well. Uh, so that, that's kind of helpful. Um, how else could we refactor this? Let's see here. Well, we could also use higher order functions and things like that, like a filter type thing. Maybe put both of the arrays together and then filter any duplicates. Um, not sure if we really need to do that for now because I think that this is a pretty good way to I mean first off we've gone through a bunch of different ways to do this I think it conceptually it makes sense you know you just iterate through each array and you find out if there's anything that's not included as part of the other and that's how you get the symmetric difference um, here we've got pretty dry code and uh, you know initially it was exp it w the code was really explicit but as we have refactored it it becomes a little bit more um, hard to understand but I think that that's kind of useful and so, yeah, I'm just going to stick with this one for now. Run the tests. I think they pass. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.